What's going on everyone? So Darvin Ham is headed into his second NBA season as a head coach for the Los Angeles Lakers and last year in many ways was a success. They went to the West Conference Finals in his first year. It would have been nice to win an NBA championship but with all the circumstances starting 2-10 and 10, having two basically completely different rosters uh, just no cohesiveness. I, I thought he did a fantastic job right and now I imagine and I'm looking forward to to this year of seeing those growth and that improvement now with a year under his belt. He wasn't perfect. He had his flaws. He had his moments. But for the most part, I thought he did an excellent job. And now he has a very good, very deep, very competent roster. And he has a full offseason, a full training camp, a full preseason, and a full regular season to get it all together. And one of the great things about Darvin Ham is however you feel about him as a coach, he, one thing he is good at is coaching defense. Lakers were the best defensive team in the league, and they were still good even when they were undersized. Uh, and he also is good at getting players to buy in, right? And that's what the Lakers are going to need with this deep team and this deep roster. You're going to need everybody front to back willing and able to buy in because you have guys that are probably going to have nights where they don't play games, or they're going to have nights where they only get 10 minutes. And then they have other nights where they get 30 minutes, right? That's the beauty of having such a deep roster. You don't have to play everybody 30 plus minutes, but also some nights things change, right? A guy's got a hot hand, like, hey, you know, tonight we're going to go with this guy, right? We're, tonight we're going to go with Vincent rather than D'Lo, because Vincent's just shooting the lights out, whatever, right? And you need a coach that can get the players to buy and get the players to believe. Usually a, a, a sign of a disaster and a sinking ship for an organization is, is when a coach loses its players and the locker room, right? You hear it all the time. He just lost the locker room. He just lost the... I don't think you're going to have that problem with Darvin Ham. He has players absolutely buy in and willing to run through a wall for you. And so you have the, the guy that is the captain of the ship who is riding and steering the ship, but you need your shipmates, right? You need your, your staff that can help lead the charge to the promised land, and that is an NBA championship. And the Lakers lost uh, two of their coaches uh, to the Phoenix Suns. Frank Vogel is the new head coach for the Phoenix Suns, and, of course, the Lakers had a couple coaches under Darvin Ham that were also coaches for Frank Vogel under his staff, and those people abandoned ship and ended up heading to the Phoenix Suns. Uh, that was the South Bay Lakers head coach, Miles Simon, and the assistant coach for the Lakers uh, in John Lucas III. Uh, both of them ended up heading to Frank Vogel uh, and the Phoenix Suns because they were a part of Frank Vogel's coaching staff uh, when he was the head coach of the Lakers. So it makes sense. And with that, what that means is you need to find replacements. You need to replace those coaches so that way you can bring guys in to be development guys and you know just like John Lucas the third was now the Lakers have somebody else to fill in that role so Laker rumors DeMar Carroll yes DeMar Carroll the NBA player joins Darvin Ham's coaching staff as an assistant uh, according to Dave McMinnon of ESPN, the Los Angeles Lakers hired former NBA player DeMar Carroll, 36, so he's still very young, as an assistant coach. Lakers head coach Darvin Ham was an assistant coach on the 2013-2014 Atlanta Hawks team that Carroll played in uh, for during his career, so there is a clear connection in place. Carroll was an assistant coach for the Milwaukee Bucks last season when Mike Bootenholzer was the head coach. Uh, Bootenholzer was also the head coach of that 2013-2014 Hawks team. So again, you're seeing the connection. You're seeing sort of the, the family tree, so to speak, right? You see that Mike Bootenholzer system is what Darvin Ham and the Lakers are running, right? So to bring in a coach now in Carroll that gives you that familiarity, right? He knows what Darvin Ham is looking to do, what he's looking to achieve, how he's looking to go about, uh, you know, the, the whole process of coaching this staff, coaching this team. And now you got an assistant that can come in and do that, right? He's not going to be like the lead assistant or the main assistant or anything like that. He's a guy that's just going to come in. He's going to be very likely one of the, the player development guys. And I think he's perfect for that. You know who he, I mean, a perfect comparison. The Lakers have like a DeMar Carroll 2.0 on the roster and Torian Prince. I mean, they are, I mean, they even kind of look alike, right? I mean, they are, I mean, twins in that regard. 
But having a guy in DeMar Carroll who was a, you know, a rotation 3 and D style guy, uh, he's, he, I think he is great for the staff because he allows all of our young guys and even some of like, even like a Tory and Prince and stuff, allows them, our wings and our perimeter players, to, to have a guy that's been there, done that, you know, has, has played in series, played in games, uh, played against LeBron, right? LeBron uh, being the dinosaur that he is. Uh, but, you know, being a, being a, a team that's you know, had, had success during the regular season, not so much the, the playoffs, but those Atlanta Hawks teams that DeMar Carroll was on, those teams were really good. Those are like, what, 61 teams, 61 win teams? And then they just ran into LeBron James. It wasn't for LeBron James. They probably would have, uh, who knows what happened, maybe even won a chip, right? Those those were the, the fun, fun teams. But, again, it's just, it gives you a guy that can be a voice for the players. You need that. You need somebody that that knows, like, hey, I was there, right? That's why, like, Jared Dudley was very important. Now, he wasn't a, he wasn't a coach for the Lakers, but immediately ended up getting a role in a position at, because, again, it's that familiarity. It's, it's understanding and being a part of the game, being a veteran, seeing things from the perspective of the players. Right? You get some of these coaches that either have never played or they haven't played in 40 years, and they just they you know they lose sight of the player's perspective, and it's nice to have a guy who is still young enough to play in the league if he wanted to, especially at the rate that you know guys' careers last. So to bring a guy like that in that can be the perspective of the players and be the voice of the players and go to Darvin Ham, you know when when one of the young guys like you know hey I feel this way you know whatever Demar can go to Ham and say hey look just so you know whatever Lewis is. He's feeling like this, you know. You need to, you need to, you need to go validate him or whatever it is, right? It's good to have that. Jason Kidd was massive for the Lakers, right? It's not a coincidence that as soon as Kidd left, things started going downhill in the locker room, right? Because he Vogel was non-confrontational. Vogel was Vogel's a good coach, but there's a lot of things wrong with Vogel as far as a head coach goes, right? And you had Jason Kidd, who one doesn't care; he'll get right in your face, tell you to go f off, right? Like it's nice to have that, but also he's he's uh, uh, one of the great basketball minds. He's a player coach. He's a guy that can represent the players. He's a guy that's you know the players' age, all of that. It's good to have that extension. It's good to have that piece of like, oh, okay, like you know, you can talk to me. I get it. Oh man, the way you're feeling right now, man, I felt that exact same way, you know, when I was on the Brooklyn Nets and we were struggling this game and blah, 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 you know, whatever, right? Like, oh man, I get it. Times are tough right now. Your your shot ain't falling. Don't worry. Impact the game a different way, right? Let's, let's go in. And, you know, it's, it's, it's one thing to hear it from your, it's one thing to hear it from your head coach. Another thing to hear it from like almost a peer, a peer, you know, like, it's just like when you're. You know, if your mom tells you or your dad tells you, like, hey, you shouldn't you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't go to this party or whatever because of this, right? You're just like, yeah, it, it's the authoritative figure, right? It's, ah, yeah, whatever, whatever. Like, you did that stuff, right? But then, like, you know, if your friend or someone you know that's your age is like, hey, man, you, you shouldn't go to that party. You shouldn't go do this thing because, you know, like, there, there's just some weird people there. It's like, you know, it's the thing that you go, oh, like, all right, cool, bet, like, I, like, I thank you, thank you for the heads up. Like I, I definitely won't do that. And it's like your your parent just told you the exact same thing, but you looked at it to them as like, ah, like what do you know, right? But it's because it's somebody that you relate to, and that can be on an even plane and a familiar ground. You immediately go, oh, we all do it, whether we realize it or not, we all do it, you know. So or like if a boss tells you to do something, right? You know, you're like ah. But if, like, your coworker's like, hey, man, can you help me do this? You're not like, that ain't my job. You're like, yeah, of course, man, I got you, right? Because you understand the struggle. They get it. You, it those, that's what bringing in a guy like DeMar Carroll will really do for this Lakers team. It'll really help out in that department and allow the Lakers to, to just have a guy that could be a voice, that could be a, a, a help development coach out on the perimeter, a guy that understands the, the 3 and D aspects of the NBA um, guys that are very similar and very familiar, I think it's a great pickup. I really do. But 
Anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Uh, is there somebody else that you would have had in mind as an, as an assistant coach? Um, and also, you also got to keep in mind, like, because I always see people throw out, like, you know, what about Rajon Rondo? What about this? What about that? Like, you got to keep in mind, like, one, somebody like Rondo, given the circumstances of what he did, I don't think he'll ever get back in the NBA, at least anytime soon, as a player or a coach. But, like, even in the most part, like, how many guys actually want to be a coach? How many guys, even if they do want to be a coach, how many want the pressure of the Lakers at some point? How many want, you know, even want to play, want to be a coach for the Lakers? Like, even players, you know? It's like, why didn't the Lakers get this guy? Like, maybe he didn't want to come, right? It's 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 a hard concept to believe sometimes, but, you know, so I like this pickup. But how do you feel? What are your thoughts? Love to hear it. Let me know down